Next at 6, fallen trees and coastal waves. We look at the damage left from the weekend storm. Then, young kids and the COVID vaccine. I think there's a huge range that people are worried about. A local pediatrician's advice for worried parents. Plus, Portland's rise in gun violence continues as the city sees the most homicides in a year. We talk to people who are now seeing their safe neighborhoods feel a lot more dangerous. It scares me, yes. Yes, it does. I'll be honest with you. And hundreds of gallons of oil spill in Clackamas County. We have more on the efforts to clean up and save wildlife coming up here in the 6 o'clock hour of sunrise. Good morning to you on a Tuesday morning, and yes, it is still raining outside. And boy, we got a look at Newport, and it was sideways. Yeah. Sideways so. rain. Well, at yeah. least it's not, you know, sideways rain here in Portland. Yeah. But yeah, it is a little breezy at the coast. It will be slightly breezy in the valley as well. And the radar is uh, lit up in the same colors that it was yesterday. Green and even a little yellow and red, which is indicative of some of the heavier bands of rain. These showers will continue washing over northwest Oregon, southwest Washington throughout the day. It is snowing up at Mount Hood uh, right now. Government camp is is raining. There is some snow down at the Sandy M Pass. All right, bus stop forecast for the kiddos. Rain gear needed all day long. Rainy this morning. Right now we're at about 55, 56 degrees and temperatures really don't go very far. We may see some breaks in the rain this afternoon, but not enough to say, oh, there'll be a dry window here or there. So Pretty much what you see is what you get out the door this morning. That'll be with us all day long, guys. All right, Chris, thank you so much. And we start with new video we got that shows more of the damage homeowners dealt with after this weekend storm. Look at this tree that fell on top of a home in Milwaukee. This is on Southeast Addy Street right near McLaughlin. Luckily, no one was hurt, but we're told there is a lot of damage to this house, which is more than 100 years old. So from downed trees to choppy coastal waves, there is no denying thousands of people felt the impact of this storm. And another tree fell right on top of a car in Milwaukee. This was on Oatfield Road. No one was hurt. The wind and downed trees knocked out power to tens of thousands Sunday. But overall, about a dozen Portland area tree services we spoke with yesterday said the damage wasn't as bad as they expected it to be. One of the bigger issues now, cleaning those leaves out from your storm drains to make sure that they don't flood streets. Along the Oregon coast, we saw people in Seaside yesterday getting a closer look there at the waves. So this was during the tail end of this weekend storm as the high winds and the heavy rain started to move out. Some of the people we ran into out there were from out of state and they told us they had never seen anything like this. It's been crazy. Yeah, the wind like shook the area that we were staying at. I checked it was like 30 miles per hour. Oh, it's like a white out. Like we were able to, like she said, we were at the, at the store and all of a sudden, I just looked outside when I just heard it pounded on the roof and it just looked outside and it looked like it as if it was snowing. Welcome to Oregon. We like to bring you the experience of a lifetime. Uh, despite those heavy winds and high surf conditions over the weekend, we haven't heard of any major damage, thankfully, along the coast. But up in Canada, it's likely that weather did play a role in a fire on board a container ship near Victoria, British Columbia. This is the Zim Kingston. It caught fire Saturday morning during some rough weather when one or two stacks of containers on that ship collapsed. Columbia River bar pilot Dan Jordan spent his early career on container ships and has a pretty good idea of what probably happened on that ship. If that bottom container gets to moving, we call it racking, um, from side to side too much, those corner posts can collapse and then the whole stack comes down. Uh, which can cause sparks or expose the contents of the container to the, the elements. Yeah, just a wild situation with that container ship. 40 containers on that ship wound up going overboard, and the fire on the ship is now smoldering. Jordan said something like this usually happens in rough water. In fact, this weekend, he experienced the stormy weather up close himself. So this is video of Jordan being lowered onto a ship that he was going to pilot across the Columbia Bar. Because of the high winds, though, and the rough water, it took two tries to get him safely on board. Yikes. Well, we turn our focus now to the tragic reality of Portland's gun violence. Police responded to 19 shootings between Friday and Sunday morning. And now the city has seen more homicides this year than it's ever had in a single year before. KGW's Mike Benner has more. The Purple House across from Unthank Park in North Portland has been in Otha Calvin's family for decades. If anybody knows the neighborhood, it's the 62-year-old. The community is, is safer now 
you know, and, and people walk their dogs and there's kids. And It makes what happened early Saturday morning all the more troubling. Police say they responded to reports of a shooting near North Haight and failing. Officers say two vehicles and a home were struck by the gunfire. It was quick. Yeah, you know what it sounds like, what gunshots sound like, don't you? Have you ever heard it? The shooting in North Portland was one of 19 shootings over a 54-hour span this weekend. Another one right here at Southeast 122nd and Stark. As officers gathered evidence here, they heard gunshots just to the west. Here at Southeast 119th and Stark, there was a drive-by shooting. Witnesses telling officers somebody was firing a gun out of a white SUV. And just blocks away near 153rd and Stark, investigators say a suspected car problem fired at least one shot after getting spooked by a neighbor. It scares me, yes. Yes, it does. I'll be honest with you. Whisper Davis has lived in the area for five years. She tells us she's more than ready to move. You hear uh, gunfire a lot? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I hear a lot of it. Too much. <laughs> in Old Town Sunday morning, officers found a man and woman shot to death. Their homicides are the 71st and 72nd in Portland this year. That's a record. Just as shocking are the more than 1,040 shootings in the Rose City this year. It's always unsettling when, you know, uh, when you want to live in a society where there's peace and, and, uh, and no fear. Back in North Portland, Otha Calvin remains hopeful that this city can rise above the gun violence that's plaguing it. You know, the village got to come together and, and try to work together and start to get a conversation going to this is that's unacceptable. In North Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. We're going to go to Southeast Portland for this next story. Investigators are trying to figure out what happened with an early morning fire on Sunday. So this is what fire crews had to deal with at Southeast 28th and Powell. There was no way they could save that old building. So they focused on protecting two adjacent homes. We're going to show you some daylight video right now. And in this daylight video, you can see that there is really nothing left of that older building that was sitting on the corner. Neighbors say it was actually boarded up several years ago and squatters came and went, no matter how many times those neighbors called to the city to complain. It was really frightening for most people. Well, it was frightening for me. I'm sure it was frightening for everybody. But these people put their lives on the line for something that could have been controlled. A fire bureau spokesperson says crews usually have to do, uh, usually have to use, I should say, extra caution with boarded up or abandoned buildings because they may run into hidden dangers. Several state agencies are cleaning up a freak oil spill in Kellogg Creek in Milwaukee. Devin Haskins has more on the deadly impact that it's having on wildlife. In this photo, you can see the deep black color of oil near an oil boom on Kellogg Creek. More than 1,500 feet of boom and absorbance are on the creek to keep the oil from entering the Willamette River. You know, oil is a uh, contaminant, and so um, it has chemicals that are toxic to fish and wildlife overall. Um, the good thing about oil is it floats on water, so um, it's easier to collect than other types of chemicals and contaminants. A fire at a car dealership service shop caused the spill on October 12th. Clackamas County Sheriff's Office says the cause of that fire is still being investigated. In the rear of the building, an oil drum holding 350 gallons of oil ruptured as five cars caught fire. That oil spilled into the storm drain and made its way to both Kellogg Creek and Lake. No amount of oil is good. Neil Shulman is the executive director of the nonprofit North Clackamas Watersheds Council. He said these types of spills and waterways in the future should be preventable. We need to upgrade our stormwater infrastructure. We have a lot more people living in the area than we did before. That means there's a lot more buildings, there's a lot more cars on the road. There's a lot more opportunities for spills both big and small. ODFW rescued this duck covered in oil and pulled another one out that died. State officials say they're now trying to catch at least another half dozen wildlife seen covered in oil. Uh, we're partnering with Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and they have uh, wildlife biologists that are actively uh, doing some recon on the lake and in the creek. And when they do see them, they try to uh, collect, um, contain and collect them. Oregon DEQ says they should be finished cleaning up this oil spill within the next week. In Milwaukee, I'm Devin Haskins, KGW News. I hate to see stuff like that. All right, Chris McGinnis, uh, there's our Newport Sky Cam. Yeah. Looks a little bit calmer. Watching this, well, I guess yeah. it's not quite as side. It's, it's, it's more like on a 45 degree angle <laughs> instead of straight sideways like it was yesterday or earlier this morning, right?
Uh, of course, this is we are looking live from Newport. This is Yaquita Bay and the, the breeze at Newport right now is sustained at 24 miles an hour. We're seeing some gusts along the Oregon coast, maybe approaching 40 and future cast does keep a bit of a stiff south breeze in the forecast today. Here we are uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon pegging Newport at you know 36 miles an hour, give or take. It's going to be breezy along the Oregon coast and even in the I-5 corridor here, Portland south of Salem, we could see some wind gusts on the order of about 25. So nothing earth shattering here, but certainly a little breeze to go along with that wet weather will mean that uh, you got to wear the full ring gear today to avoid getting soaked, right? This is a look at the radar satellite over the last 12 hours. Our big wind maker, that big bomb cyclone, if you will, uh, worked its way on up into British Columbia, and it's it's spinning down. The energy with that is going over the Canadian Rockies, uh, but the onshore flow behind it continues pushing moisture into the Pacific Northwest, so that will keep us pretty much on and off wet throughout the day and future cast really really pegs that. I mean, there may be some breaks here and there, but nothing long enough to say, oh, We've got a dry window in our Tuesday forecast. Now that said, the rain isn't terribly heavy, so we're looking at maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of rain here in Portland. Snowfall up in the Cascades will be reserved for the higher terrain generally above the passes. It's snowing right now on the Sandy M pass, but that snow level will climb. Uh, and so really we're looking at, you know, close to Timberline, I think, by the time the snow level gets done climbing today, which or I should say where it is snowing pretty heavily right now. There's a live look at Timberline. And that's pretty cool to see switching gears. There's a different Timberline camera and uh, man, oh man, let's see if we can get this just right here. We're trying to get that seven day forecast for you guys. I can tell you that the weekend is still looking pretty good. I've got a dry Saturday and a dry Sunday for Halloween. East breeze kicks in. That'll help, you know, fluff the leaves up a little bit and make a great trick or treating weather. We think stay tuned. We've got five days to kind of watch that forecast between now and then. Yes, stay tuned for the fluffing of the leaves. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned for this as well. This is coming up next on Sunrise. When Oregon's finest culinary minds try to outdo one another, the real winners are the people who get to eat their food. Coming up, we're going to take you inside what they call the Battle of the Chefs. It was a competition featuring some of the area's most popular restaurants and a few secret ingredients as well.